When it comes to understanding the universe, and essentially how it evolved over the past 13.8 billion years, one of the major ways researchers have been doing this is by basically observing various types of background radiation. For example, by using a relatively sensitive radio telescope, it becomes possible to detect an extremely faint glow we refer to as CMB, or Cosmic Microwave Background. And though back in the days this was a super unusual discovery, it essentially confirmed something really important. It confirmed the ideas behind the Big Bang, the sudden and very explosive expansion of the universe 13.8 billion years ago. With this very faint background glow essentially being the leftovers from this early explosion. But on top of CMB, there are obviously a lot of other types of light and a lot of other types of backgrounds that allow us to study other things as well. For example, in one of the most recent videos, we've actually discussed the cosmic neutrino background, which might be even more exciting. Now, CMB shows us the universe when it was only about 379,000 years old. But cosmic neutrino background would actually show us the universe when it was just one second old. But because neutrinos don't actually interact with matter very well, detecting this background right now is very, very difficult. Likewise, we have something known as the gravitational wave background, which as the name implies, is composed of various gravitational waves permeating the universe. And in this case, these waves are coming from everywhere, while also providing us with various types of information that would be otherwise inaccessible, simply because gravitational waves go through all matter without any issues. And we've actually discussed the discovery and the confirmation of this background extremely recently in the videos in the description. And for the most part, it seems to be caused by really massive black holes orbiting in various colliding galaxies. But it's possibly caused by some other phenomena that you can learn more about in that video in the description. But the point I'm trying to make is that there are a lot of different backgrounds out there and they're all important for different reasons and teach us different things about our own universe. But technically speaking, if you were to basically have a very powerful optical telescope, and if you were to then somehow turn away from all of the bright locations, including of course our sun and potentially any other reflections extremely close to us, you could then start observing what's known as the optical background. Or basically all of the optical light coming from the entire universe and from every object in it. And surprisingly, so far this has actually been the most difficult background to try to detect for very unusual reasons. First of all, in the vicinity of planet Earth, there are just way too many sources for different types of light. Even Earth's atmosphere, or the sunlight reflected from various types of interplanetary dust, oversaturates any optical observations, making any observations just a little bit too difficult. And so here, even using something like the Hubble telescope, we're just not going to get the true optical background just because there's too much interference from minute particles around planet Earth and also from dust particles between Earth and other planets. Nevertheless, trying to observe this COB or cosmic optical background is actually important in order to understand the overall energy produced by various galaxies and various stars in those galaxies while also basically calculating the total number of stars and galaxies in the entire universe and possibly discovering some unusual anomalies. In other words, by looking at the cosmos with the optical telescope, we can actually discover what's hiding in the universe and how much of it is hiding in it. But even more importantly, in astrophysics, it also provides an important benchmark that can be used to prove various ideas and various theories in regards to the structure of the universe and in regards to the evolution of the universe and of course stars and galaxies in it. And here we actually have quite a lot of theoretical predictions with very specific numerical values. In other words, in terms of the actual numbers, there are certain numbers of galaxies and obviously numbers of stars in those galaxies that's expected based on modern cosmology. But up until relatively recently, or I guess more like 2017 or so, it's been practically impossible to measure. We did not actually have powerful enough telescopes, or I guess optical telescopes, far enough from the Sun and from planet Earth to be able to see this pure darkness. Because basically there was always something trying to interfere with these measurements. But then we got New Horizons mission. The mission to Pluto that's basically now been traveling 
farther and farther and farther away from the sun, while also carrying an extremely important instrument known as LORI. Long Range Reconnaissance Imager. This is one of the shots by LORI from 2015. And it's essentially a reflecting telescope with an extremely high quality camera inside. And as a result, it's really good at taking a lot of very sensitive photos. And naturally, after 18 years of travel, New Horizons and LORI are now basically super far away from anything that can cause any optical interference. It's currently about 58 astronomical units away from the Sun and is thus basically in complete darkness. But even before that, starting back in 2017, researchers were already using LORI to essentially try to conduct these optical studies. And while initially, during some of these earlier studies, as we discussed in one of the videos in the description, something unusual started to be discovered. There seemed to be just a little bit more optical background light than the scientists expected. And it wasn't clear why. Some scientists assumed that maybe there are just way more galaxies out there than what we expected, while others assumed that it was coming from some anomalous sources that we still don't understand. And in some of the first studies, this anomalous light was basically just as bright as all of the light expected from galaxies. So basically here, the universe appeared to be twice as bright in general. Which of course implied that there's something unusual going on and there's something that we still didn't understand about the universe even in the optical light. And so as a result of these initial discoveries, scientists behind the recent paper wanted to do this again but do this way more accurately by conducting 16 separate observations in various locations around the New Horizons probe, once again focusing on essentially complete darkness. But by also making sure that the LORI and its camera were pointed directly away from the sunlight by basically blocking everything with the New Horizons probe. And so after these 16 shots and after extremely careful calibration of light levels, scientists behind the study were able to calculate the total brightness of the universe at the most accurate level ever. And the new value for the universe's visible light is approximately 11.16 nanowatts per steradian. Now, this obviously might not mean much to you, but turns out that this is extremely close to the predicted value from various theories of evolution of the universe involving modern cosmology. As a matter of fact, the predicted value is approximately 8.17 plus minus 1.18, so there's really only like 2 to maybe 3 nanowatt of discrepancy with that very minor discrepancy potentially being anomalous light, but definitely within the boundaries of what's expected from light coming from various galaxies. And so in essence, what this tells us is that first of all, the universe is indeed super dark, much darker than some of the initial observations from the New Horizons, but just as dark as scientists predicted for several decades. But also, most of the visible light seems to be indeed coming just from galaxies that existed in the last 12.6 billion years. Although just to clarify again, this is just for the optical and visible light, not for infrared, not for x-rays and so on. And so confirming that the cosmic optical background seems to be basically just galaxies, though not super exciting, is obviously very important. It kind of confirms that there might be no strange or unexplainable physics going on, there are no super unusual phenomena that seem to be producing more light than we should be seeing, and most importantly, this basically almost directly fits with predictions from decades ago. And in case you're wondering how bright this actually is, the scientists here do give us a bit of an analogy. They compare it to being inside a cabin on a very very dark moonless night and then seeing another cabin approximately 1.6 kilometers away where someone basically opens a fridge. And so the intensity of light here is equivalent to a fridge light from 1.6 kilometers away, which in essence represents all of the optical light detected by this camera. And that's approximately 100 times darker than even the darkest spot on planet Earth in any location where you can see the night sky. So essentially here on Earth, even during nighttime, we're actually still seeing so much more light than produced by the entire universe. But obviously here we still have some unanswered questions. First of all, there is still that tiny tiny amount of anomalous light. And what exactly this is caused by is still unknown. And second of all, it's still unclear why previous observations, even from 2023, seem to detect a lot more anomalous intensity, even though back then New Horizons was already quite far away. For example, previous observations from 2022 and 2023 had the total light at almost double the value. 
and that would be almost impossible to explain. And so the researchers right now believe that it was probably something to do with inaccuracy of previous techniques, with the current technique being the most accurate so far. But in reality, we're not going to know for at least a few more years, and we'll probably have more details after a few more observations. And in terms of what's actually producing all of the light we're seeing, here it's divided into several categories. Most of it is coming from scattered starlight and diffuse galaxies, some of it is coming from really faint galaxies, there's also some light from faint stars, and a very tiny portion is coming from emissions of hydrogen and from the scattered light from various galaxies. And that's based on these 16 observations. Now obviously some locations will have more hydrogen or possibly more galaxies, but on average this is basically what we see so far. And so I guess here the important conclusion is that there seems to be no anomaly after all. At the moment the universe seems to be basically kind of as predicted and to some extent maybe just a little bit boring. But that's also the good news. It means that we kind of understand the universe pretty well and no new physics or new explanations are currently needed. But that's at least for now. Once there are additional discoveries or even more observations, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.